As we move farther back into the van and we discuss what we've got going on with the CDS, let's stay with the van itself just to kind of clear some things up on how we start the machine, making sure that everything is set properly so that there's no issues in running this at full capacity. The first thing that we want to do as we exit the van, we want to make sure our parking brake is set. We want to make sure that we're in park, it needs to be all the way in park. We want to make sure that our foot is not on the brake pedal. And I'll tell you in a few minutes what we've got going on there. If you have air conditioning in your van or heaters on, we want to make sure those are turned off. Uh, it plays, it, it, it will fluctuate your machine as you're using it if the compressor is off and on and off and on if that's left in operation. So make sure that all your accessories are off. We're going to start the van and have it idle. That's all we need to do. Um, if, and I want to point this out. Here is a control panel for the CDS that is located underneath the driver's side here above the gas pedal velcroed to the firewall. Now this control panel, all it is doing is reading, making sure that our parking brake is set, that our gear is in park, and that there's no depression on the pedal. It's also reading a yaw sensor in the newer van, such as this one, is a 2014. And that tells, that sends a, a, a signal to the onboard computer that the van could be moving and therefore that will also interrupt this. It doesn't stop the CDS from being started, but if any of these things are in jeopardy or if something's not right, it will not let you ramp up the RPMs on the CDS. But it will not stop it from starting. So in the case of a situation where it won't ramp up, make sure that everything is the way it needs to be and it should be just fine. Lights will indicate on this board and it'll tell you exactly what the issue is. So let's keep that in mind. Now let's move back into the power pack and into the CDS unit itself. Whether we're on a flat surface or if we're on a driveway that has a, a, a fall to it, let's make sure we put our tire chocks in just for safekeeping here. So let's get those in place. Something easily forgotten, but let's make sure we do that. As we move back into the van and get to the CDS unit itself, we have our van running, we have our parking brake set, our brake pedal is not being impeded, and we've got it in park. So at this point in time, let's start the machine. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to turn the machine on because the noise at this point would make it very difficult to communicate what we're trying to do. But I'm going to indicate this by the light. We're going to imagine that this is running. It will run even if we have some things going on on the dashboard or, or with our control panel down there. But at this point, let's come to the machine. Before we turn it on all the way, right now it's just in the accessory mode. Before we turn it on, we want to make sure all of our buttons, all of our toggles here are in the down position or off position. Our throttle control will be actually in the low position, but for starting this up, this is what we want to do. So before we get any fluid going in here, we want to make sure we hook up our lines. So we put our chemical line in, and it doesn't matter which outlet you use, this machine has a capability of running two wands. For this purpose, we're just going to hook up the one. We're going to hook this up. We're also going to hook up our hose to the freshwater inlet here, which is hooked to a quick connect. That comes with the kit. You're ready to go. We're going to turn the water on. Keep in mind, before we hook this up, in retrospect, flush your hose. If it's a homeowner's hose that's been sitting out, Make sure you flush it before you hook it up to your machine. That'll keep any debris from going into the machine itself. In this case here, we have a new hose. But, and if you have one that's under control, it's just a good idea to flush that out in case something has crawled in or some debris has gotten in it. That just saves for future problems. So once we get that hooked up, we've got our water turned on. By turning on our water, we're automatically going to be filling the water box. At which point, the shutoff float at the bottom, if it doesn't have water in it already, will be raised and that will make sure that everything is going to work. So once we get that done, we're pretty much ready to go here to start it up. To start up the machine, we're going to turn the machine on. Again, we're not going to do it right now. Turn the machine on. It'll start running. It'll run at 1500 RPMs. That's the high mode. We also have a mid-range and a low range. So I'm going to discuss the throttle control at this point since we're right here. Most people want to just shove it into high and leave it in high. 
It really, it's, it's, it's okay, but it really isn't necessary because you're running the engine at 1500 RPM. The mid-range is 1400 RPM and the low range is 1300 RPM. The low range we would use for fabric if we're doing any upholstery work. We don't need that high, uh, that high setting. It's going to work just fine on that setting. Most of the jobs that you're going to be looking at, if you're running 150 feet of hose, average house, mid-range is going to be just fine. When you start getting away from the truck, 200 feet, 300 feet, if that's the case, you're going to need that high setting. That's going to give you the extra suction on the vacuum. We are at this point, if we didn't have a garden hose to hook up and we had a fresh water tank on board, and that's where we're getting our water source, before we fire it up, we want to make sure that we have the fresh water pump turned on, and that's what this switch will do right here. That'll start to feed the fresh water into your, um, into your fresh water tank on this end of it, and it'll uh, get the float up and you'll be able to operate it. The next step is if you have a pump out, and I'm going to move over here to the cab side. The next toggle switch we have on our panel here is the pump out switch. Now our machines have two options basically besides the fresh water tank and any kind of uh, uh, holding tank and whatever you may have back here that's extra. The two options are the automatic pump out, we call it the APO, and that is activated with this toggle switch right here. Now what that's going to do is it's going to allow the tank to fill up to a certain degree. It's going to come up to about, this is a 100 gallon tank. It's probably going to run up to about 60 gallons before this float on the top is engaged, at which point with this activated power to the pump, it will automatically pump out, which means at this point there is, and we'll come around and we'll look at that in a second, but that's what that machine there is for and this is the toggle that will control it. If you don't have the APO, then that's going to come out of the picture. You don't have to worry about it. But the machines are equipped to handle it at any point in time. You can add it later if you need it.